Manufacturers use different methods to achieve tier four options. Before you buy your tractor, understand what your options are. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Paul from countrycraziness.com. If you're interested in tractors, post frame construction and homesteading, well, you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell and join in on the conversation. If you've ever been around a tractor before they had tier four emission requirements, you know what a sooty mess it can be. Check out Tractor Mike's new Holland tractor and see what he has to put up where that exhaust hits his wheel. And if you're interested in the cleaner he uses, I'll put a link down below. What's worse is not only does he have to put up with the mess that he gets on his tractor, but he's going to be breathing that particulate matter, especially when he's in the barn starting his tractor up for the first time. Today's manufacturers have three ways that they achieve tier four emission standards. And I'm going to go through what each of those three ways are. The first method is to build tractors that are less than 25 horsepower. Any tractor that's less than 25 horsepower is exempt from tier four emission standards. What's more, most manufacturers offer compact tractors that are below 25 horsepower and above 25 horsepower to help you match up the proper equipment. Now, if you can get by with only using a 25 horsepower or less tractor, congratulations. You're going to spend less money and you're never going to have to worry about the emission controls on the tractor. However, don't let that be the reason why you make that decision. The most important decision that you have to make is what's going on at the PTO. If the PTO horsepower isn't adequate to operate the implements that you need to run on your particular property requirements, then you could be setting yourself up for a big mistake. A common method that manufacturers use is using what they call a diesel particulate filter. Now, the way that these filters work is they accumulate the soot and carbon inside a chamber over a period of time. And then every 30 to 60 hours, they go through a burn cycle and burn that matter off. Now, most manufacturers allow you to continue to operate your tractor during a regen cycle. So it really isn't a big deal for most users. The downside of a diesel particulate filter is they do have a life. And after about 3000 hours, you're going to have to replace that filter and it's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars probably. However, if you're a weekend warrior like myself, chances are you're only going to put 50 to 100 hours a year on that tractor, which means it's going to last 30 to 60 years easily. So it shouldn't be a big concern if you're in that kind of situation. Now, if you're going to buy a tractor and you're going to use it professionally, for commercial purposes, then you're going to be running a lot more hours and you might want to consider the third method, which is to use a diesel oxide catalyst or DOC. That system works much like the catalytic converter in your car and it should last indefinitely. If you're a weekend warrior, you really don't have to worry too much about the way that emission standards are met. Focus on the things that are important. Find yourself a dealer where you can develop a good relationship. Find a tractor brand that gives you a good parts availability when you need it. Find a platform that you sit on and work with that feels comfortable for your size. Believe me, once you own your tractor and you're working your property, you're going to be thinking about how comfortable your seat is, not what's going on under the hood. And if you'd like to learn more about tractors, then check out this link up above.